Your nature, your natural self. The choice is yours. God has given you that choice. Now, the belief that godly life is the only true life, then the commitment to become partakers of that divine. Do you have that faith? For the past week, we learned that we need to supplement this thing called faith with qualities of virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, and love. Now, when we studied these in the last eight weeks, it seems to me that there's a definite sequence of these qualities. That having faith means once I was lost, but now I am found. Once I was blind, but now I see. Before, we were blinded by sin to recognize true love, true beauty, and true goodness. We were ignorant of our purpose and life. But with faith, faith, we now see the realities around us and in us with the correct vision of God. When I take this off, the world becomes very blurry. Is that person that I know or somebody that I don't know? Is that a tree or just a tall person? I could kind of see it, but I kind of don't see it. Well, when you put on your corrective vision of God, you start to see things clearly. Something that you once thought was something beautiful, something good. Now you see it as something ugly. Something that is not good. Something that is bad. The things around us and in us that was confusing is now made perfectly clear. We now recognize that everything of God is good, virtuous, beautiful, and perfect. Now we recognize that. Not only do I desire to be good and a better person, now I see a need for true good within me with a capital G. I need to be like Jesus Christ. I need his goodness in my life. For my life to be beautiful, for my life to be good, for my life to be truly meaningful, worth its purpose. If you have faith in God and see his goodness, Everyone in your home too. Let me see your hand. Do you see the goodness of God? All over here too. Do you see the goodness of God? Okay. If you see the goodness of God, but if you have no desire for his goodness, I see it, I don't want it. Then you don't have faith in God. You have faith about God, about who he is, but you have yet to have true faith. Now to this faith and goodness, we are to supplement knowledge, deeper knowledge of who God is and how we can be like him. But knowing about God is not sufficient. As we read during our, our, our study, John chapter 5 says this, you study the scripture diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me and have life. How many of you are going to God right now? How many of you are just looking at God from a distance? Okay, God, I know about you. What God is saying is, that is not enough. Reading about scripture, knowing about me is not enough. You have to come to me. That's why you're reading the scripture. That's why you have knowledge. We have knowledge so we can figure out how to go to God, how to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The only way that we can see 
not only see sin as the bad, corrupt, dirty, and hurtful thing that it is, but make choices to avoid sin and choose the goodness of God. The only way that we can see sin as a thing to avoid rather than pleasure to be pursued, desires to be pursued, is to fill yourself with Jesus Christ. Jesus will come into your hearts and start driving things out, pushing things out. But until then, there's no way you're going to be able to push these things out yourself. To this faith, goodness, and knowledge, we are to supplement self-control so that we can live the life that we were meant to live. We need to control our laziness, anger, lustfulness, pride, conceit, self-centeredness. We become self-controlled, not by being strong-willed on our feet, but by praying strongly on our knees. How many of you lost your temper this week? How many of you became lustful this week? How many of you became self-centered this week? Well, when you discover these things in you, you have to kneel down immediately and ask God, God, I need self-control right now. I need your help. Enable me. Strengthen me. It's not your strong willpower. It is your ability to get on your knees and go to God. That's going to give you the strength and enable you. To faith, goodness, knowledge, and self-control, we are to supplement steadfastness or perseverance. Let me ask you, is it easy or hard to, be self uh, to have perseverance, to be steadfast in God? Is it easy? Is it hard? Raise your hand inside your heart. To me, being steadfast in God and persevering with God is easy. It's hard. Well, for those of you who love God, it is not too much of a burden. For the Bible tells me so. But if you do not love God, not only is it going to be hard, it's going to be impossible. You know, I, I persevere for my son Daniel. I do everything I can, as much as I can. And it is not a burden for me. It's a pleasure for me. I have to work hard. The times maybe I need to, you know, the things that I could do for myself, I have to do for him. The things I could buy for myself, I buy for him. The time I could spend with myself, I take some of that and spend it with him. Why? Because I love him. When there's love, it no longer becomes burden. When James does something for his girlfriend, even though you know, he wants to do something for himself, it's not a burden anymore because he loves her. And it becomes a pleasure for him to do so. Persevering and being steadfast only becomes difficult when it becomes work, when there's no love. And also, Jesus Christ reminds us himself that he, when he, that he encourages us. He says, I have overcome the world and I will be with you till the end of the ages. Because we love God, and because God is always with us and enabling us, we are able to persevere and be steadfast. Now, to faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, and steadfastness, we are to supplement godliness, becoming like Christ. To become godly, we need to discipline ourselves. Discipline, we talked about before, is cutting things out. When we fill ourselves with Christ... Christ will push some of these things out. He will cut off the things we talked about before. Feeding, eating, resting, sleeping, spending time with God, and third, exercising. We need to make decision of what are we going to cut off and what are we going to add. 
to faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, and steadfastness and godliness, we are to supplement brotherly affection. You know, brotherly love is much more than just friends who happen to have same common religion. You know, we are a real family who has real same father. We have brotherly love because we are one organism. We are the body of Christ together. You are my brother. You are my sister because we have the same father. We are same organism working together as the body of Christ for the good of us and God. To everything that we talked about, we are to supplement love. Start the process of becoming partakers of God's nature with love. Because I love God, because I recognize God's love, that's how faith starts. Paul, that we talked about till now. It's the quality that binds every single qualities that we talked about together as one. It's the one that unites everything. The seven qualities that we talked about previously, love's not only in every one of those, it combines and unites all of them, binds everything together. This is what mature Christian looks like. When we can love God and others with undying love. When we have love for every single part of our life. You know, 2 Peter 1, Peter is encouraging us to build upon the foundation of faith, the qualities of goodness, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, and love. With successive qualities seem to be springing from the previous one. It's con sequential, but we must correctly understand this this is not like playing a game it's not like you have to break this level to get to the next level these qualities are not levels of spiritual matureness it's not like i have to complete and finish the level of faith before i get to the level of goodness no as we are developing faith and goodness we supplement these things with knowledge and so forth and so on. Everything happens together. The sequence of when it comes in may, may vary, but it's not like we finish with one. Okay, I don't need this anymore. Everything is happening together. Verse 8 tells us this. If these qualities are yours, and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful. Let me ask you, do you have these qualities in your life? The eight qualities that we talked about. I want you to think about this. Do I have these qualities in my life? Are these qualities increasing in me? Is my goodness, is my self-control. Are these things growing and increasing in me? If you don't have these qualities, or if you are not increasing in these qualities, you are going to be, it says, ineffective and unfruitful. The problem is that most Christians try to jump from faith to loving your enemies and wonder why they can't do it. Wonder what's wrong with me? What's wrong with my faith? Maybe I'm not a Christian. I can't do this stuff. What God is saying is all these must take place. You can't just automatically have love for your enemies. That we need to instill in us and increase these qualities for us so that love will be bubbling up from our hearts. It doesn't naturally happen that way, day one of faith. 
And then verse 9 warns us what will become of us if we lack these qualities. This is what it says. Whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his formal sins. If you notice that you just can't seem to overcome sinful desires in your life, that you just seem to be stuck in the same spiritual life every single day, if you feel like you're just failing, it's because you are lacking these qualities. If this is you, you need to examine yourself and find where you're stuck. Do you know where you're stuck out of these eight qualities? Do you know where you are? Do you know which ones you're not increasing? I want all of you to assess where you are and make a commitment to add and develop these qualities in your life. In your small group today, I want you to discuss this with your small group members. Which qualities am I rich in? Which qualities do I not have? Which am I increasing? Which am I decreasing? Which is non-existent in my life? I want you to think about this and evaluate yourself and discuss it in your small group today. Let me close with verses 10 and 11. If you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, they will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want all of you to be filled with these qualities as creatures who are created in the image of God should be. These eight qualities that we discussed for the last two months, I need you to be filled with these. What's in your heart? What's in your heart right now? You know, when the world squeezes you in its hardship, in its temptation, in its insults, in its tests and trials, when the world squeezes you, what's coming out of you? When the world squeezes you, I want Jesus to come out. When the world squeezes you with the hardship and insults, I want the love of Christ to come out of you. So I need you to fill yourself with Christ. So in times when you're being squeezed, I need to see Jesus dripping out of you. Let's all close our eyes. I want you to talk to yourself right now. Do I really want to be filled with Jesus Christ? When I'm squeezed right now, what's coming out? Is my selfishness, is my anger coming out? Or is my self-control and perseverance and brotherly love coming out? What is in me? What is filling me? Do I desire to have God's divine nature in me so that I can live with them every single day in His glorious nature so I could really be in God's image? Do I really want to be fulfilled that way? I want you to ask yourself and I want you to really know that the true life is with God. If you don't have God in your everyday life, it's, you're not living day by day. You're dying by day, day by day. Your spirituality is dying day by day. You're going to be more depressed, more lonely more full of this world, more emptiness, more purposeless. You'll be reaching for things that has no end. It says things of this world, the greed, the lust, the pride, it has never, there's no end. I want all of you to live day by day 
live. Live with God. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. Fill us with desire to love you and be like you, Lord, so that we will not have the image of sinful nature, but we will have the image of God. We want to fill ourselves with you, Jesus Christ. When the world squeezes you, you will just come out of me. You will come out of my heart into my mouth. It will be out of my mouth, and the world will hear you, not me. The world will see you, not me. That the world may have love and peace, that I may have love and peace in you. I pray that all of our youth will have the desire to be mature in you, Lord. And I pray that you would just move them with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for keeping us safe and healthy for another week. Help us never to lose our thankfulness, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Okay, today I have a couple of announcements. One, we will be, our praise team has prepared a praise for our youth, uh, we will be, I will be distributing that through an email, and all of you 